so from the time of this recording we got a few weeks until e3 hits us hopefully big time i'm releasing this video three weeks into the future from the time of this recording on june 6 which is a single day before e3 begins on june 7th with ea's conference but before I get into specific speculation of what I want at E3 versus what I expect at E3, let's go ahead and list off the attending companies for this year's presentation, and I'll talk about the contents of their presentation as I'm talking about them as well. So starting with EA, uh, who is going to be having the floor from June 7th to June 9th, EA has decided that they're skipping out on regular press conference for this year, and instead are running with several live streams that will air throughout the couple days. Uh, supposedly with new gameplay and behind the scenes looks of the teams making their games. Now I'm not sure exactly what this new format you know differs from their older one, <laughs> minus maybe having some guy on stage giving announcements uh, pre and post uh, game showing, but what seemingly it can be guaranteed from EA though is that Anthem, Apex Legends, Battlefield 5, FIFA 20, and Star Wars Jedi The Fallen Order uh, should all have some presence. Now, I personally don't own an Xbox, but I look to be getting a PS4 uh, Pro later this year, hopefully around my birthday, uh, so I don't think any of these uh, games will shake things up for me much. Uh, I know EA has a lot of bad rep concerning loot boxes and stuff, so I suspect fans will be on the lookout with these games, such as Apex and whatnot, uh, and the compatibility with loot boxes in those games, but time will tell. Hopefully they won't crash and burn. Microsoft Xbox on June 9th. Now, I'm not a huge Microsoft guy, but as a Nintendo fan, I do like seeing what the competition has to offer. Rip Sony. I've never owned a Microsoft gaming uh, console, and I think I owned like a single Microsoft brand computer, but that was Acer, so I don't know the logistics behind that. But I'd be welcome to changing that soon if there are some neat exclusives that, uh, that Xbox is willing to offer. Supposedly, Nintendo and Microsoft won't be showing off any new hardware upgrades to their current consoles, but fans still speculate that we'll be seeing Microsoft's newest Xbox installment, Xbox Scarlet. Now, everything I know about Scarlet has all stemmed from about a two-minute Google search, uh, which I've done for research for this video, and even that has failed to enlighten me. So I don't know if it's purely speculation or if they've been teasing it in the same manner that Nintendo was teasing the NX, which turned out to be the Switch, or what. Now, truthfully, I just want a reason to actually care about the Xbox brand, whether that be by Cuphead 2 or what. I don't care. I don't really care about Bethesda, but I have a lot of friends who are Skyrim fans, so I'd be happy to see them happy. The other thing is that supposedly Fallout 76 sucked, and I hate that because I'm a West Virginia lover. My whole family is actually from there, so... Wild and wonderful, boys. <laughs> Bethesda, along with EA, is a company that people love to kick while they're down. Now, so all I really want to see is, you know, just them kind of get back up and do something decent. And that's my view of... Uh, well, that that's just kind of my view as an outsider, so... I, I, I just want them to do decent. <laughs> On June 10th, we have the PC gaming show. So I have like no idea what this could consist of aside from PC exclusives or maybe PC ports of popular console games. Speaking of which, I know that Octopath is getting a PC port, but I can't see them and therefore Square Enix focusing on Octopath for long. Like, maybe a quick 20-some second showing, and then moving on. Now, supposedly there's like an Octopath 2 in development with the prequel on mobile, but that's a topic for a whole other video, just Octopath and its line of games. I don't think any of those games are going to be shown during this conference, aside from just the original Octopath Traveler, uh, even if they do show that. Now, I know that Sega loves porting their games, so maybe a lot of Sega stuff beats me. Although, speaking of Sega... I wonder why they don't have E3 presence. That's really weird. June 10th, also we have uh, Ubisoft. So June 10th is looking to be a jam-packed day of practically nothing, so uh, hopefully Ubisoft uh, delivers. The Mario plus Rabbids game was supposedly super fun, and with the DLC expanding on that, so I hope to see something just as fun and uh, creative from Ubisoft this year, along with co-op and replayability value, a lot like Mario and Rabbids supposedly had. So, here we go. The sixth one, we have Square Enix on June 11th. So now we're getting a little deep here. 
Square Enix fans, myself included, uh, at times, can be <laughs> can be super anal uh, with some Square games, what they show, how they show it to them. Square Enix fans are honestly the worst. They're just about as bad as your typical anime weeaboo. Uh, but <laughs> that aside, with Final Fantasy VII, with its remake being reemerged from the afterlife or act from the pre-life of development last month in May. Uh, tons of people are speculating what Square Enix plans to show to knock the ball out of the park here. Now, a lot of this speculation stems into Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC, the Final Fantasy VII Remake news, possibly a release date for Episode 1, for Part 1, whatever you want to call it, the Avengers Project, which we know nothing about, and more. <laughs> so, Square Enix has a problem of promoting and promising games and then hiding in their cave for another three years. So, personally, I've grown used to it, but considering how FF15 and Kingdom Hearts 3 were, were received by hardcore fans, despite their sales, uh, Square has a lot of ground to cover. To be completely honest, I'd like them to focus more on the Avengers project. I really want to see how this could intertwine with Insomniac wanting to expand a gaming universe out of their Spider-Man PS4 game. Supposedly. That's really what I'm really wanting. I am interested in the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC, but with a name like Remind and already telling us what's going to be in it, the only thing we're missing is like specifics, and I don't really want spe <laughs> specifics, so, uh, but as far as FF7 is concerned, I'm totally getting it, I'm totally hyped for it, I just don't think it's something, like, it, it's it's a remake with a new battle system, that's that's pretty much it, like, I I. I I love it, I love the original, I played it, I beat it on my PS, or actually, I beat it on my Switch. Uh, so, I mean, like, I'm looking forward to the remake, but that's about it. So, the Avengers Project is really what I'm looking for. But anyway, uh, yeah, as much as I know, uh, I'll probably end up eating my words as far as, you know, Kingdom Hearts 3's uh, DLC goes. I'll probably end up being super hyped for it and everything else, but at the same time, like I said, I know it's going to be silly and stupid. So, here we go. June 11th to June 13th, we have... Nintendo. Now, Nintendo has a lot of expectations to rummage through, given that we have Animal Crossing, Pokemon, Fire Emblem, and I believe even Luigi's Mansion, which all need information here. No joking. Now, tons of people are also expecting the Legend of Zelda remake, along with some type of 3D Mario uh, sequel to Odyssey, which I don't see happening. Uh, so I don't think that we'll be seeing much of the Zelda remake, considering that all the other previous titles I've mentioned uh, fans definitely need information on. Zelda can wait, and I feel like, again, that 3D Mario is completely out of the question for now. Uh, some people are even still waiting for Metroid Prime 4 to be announced again. Whew. There are quite a few games revealed at Nintendo's E3s uh, throughout the past couple years, the, the past two years, uh, that fans have either A, easily forgotten about, or were released under the rug. So I was worried that Octopath would be subject to this, but it was good to see Nintendo take care of Octopath's marketing. Uh, what I haven't seen, or, or excuse me, what I haven't let slide yet was Ninjala, Demon X Machina, and I know there's something else. I know. I just keep forgetting what the other thing was. There was another E3 thing that Nintendo was really promoting, and I forgot what it was. But anyway... It looked like, uh, speaking about Ninjala itself, it, it looked like a Melee successor to Splatoon, so I've been excited to hear from it, but that never happened. So now, the elephant in the room is easily Smash. Smash Bros. has a strict schedule of DLC fighters that they're wanting to roll out by next February, which is just short of eight months for four fighters. If they want to shadow drop a character over E3 and then announce the other character for August slash September, that would be their best move, but I'm not putting stock into it. I'm really not... I mean, like, I would put literal stock into Nintendo, I'd make a bank, but the issue is... But the issue is... Is, the, is, is that... It, it's, 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 it's like betting on a horse, and it's the best horse out of the race, it just has a tendency to, to decide not to actually race. It's it's the weirdest thing. Nintendo, you're really doing a number here, pal. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, I think at least one character reveal is guaranteed, but having two DLC fighters, I'm not sure. I, I mean, like, again, Nintendo revealed Simon, Richter, and K. Rool all within the same Direct in August of 2018. 
Uh, so that, but but at the same time, that was also their base roster with only four months left until the actual game dropped. Here, it's just DLC. There's probably a different perception of how promotion works with DLC. I would assume, anyway. But whatever. Personally, I think Animal Crossing is going to have a summer release, followed with Fire Emblem in the early fall. Luigi's Mansion somewhere in either October or December, with uh, Pokemon in November. The only issue I have with this is that that's four huge games almost a month. It, it'll definitely steam Nintendo's sales, but it also sounds way too good to be true. One huge game a month. That's, that's, that's out there. Lots of people were expecting Nintendo to already give two or three of these games definitive release dates by now, but as far as I've heard, that's all in the wind. I think what's most realistic for Nintendo, or excuse me, I think what's what's most realistic is for Nintendo to focus a good chunk on Animal Crossing and release it before the end of July. Potentially, if we get an August Direct, they could dedicate that to mostly Fire Emblem. Pokemon typically gets their own Directs, which I could see that happening in either September or October for its November release, and then maybe an October Direct for their winter releases, which would include Luigi's Mansion, Ninjala, and whatever happened to Damon X Machina, because all we had was the demo. So yeah, and then obviously they're gonna do the Prime, uh, the the Metroid Prime 4 tease again. That's kind of guaranteed. So I'm sure Nintendo will focus heavily too on pleasing longtime Nintendo fans with reviving old franchises, possibly. Like a lot of people want to see the Prime trilogy get ported and a Pikmin port as well. And a lot of people too, and I feel sorry for these people, but a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people are wanting, <laughs> are wanting something new <laughs> concerning Star Fox or F-Zero. <laughs> so honestly, I don't have the faintest idea. It's, it's, Nintendo's just a wild ball. I don't know what to predict with them, but... That's about it. So those are all my thoughts and predictions for this year's E3. I know for Nintendo I went a little overboard, but considering they have so much ground to cover, it's just a lot. 2019 is looking to be a roller coaster of a year for the gaming industry, and 2020 is to follow up. So guys, that's all that's about all I have. This is Jake logging out. Peace.